my approach. Uh, how, how do you get started on these on these on these treatments in a, in the hospital setting, though? So you've got a patient presenting ah. with Alzheimer's disease, and are they are, are patients coming going to you going? I've heard of this stuff. Can I try it? Or does that ever happen? Or no. are you just going? You go, oh, hey, look, I can treat you with these medicines, but have you thought about changing these other things as well? How, how do you, how, do, how does, do either of those things happen or how do you do uh, it? I think for me, I had to get out of the hospital system for the three years there were basically, well, most of the three years where I, um, as I said, I, I traveled, worked in some hospitals and volunteered in, in uh, poor poor countries as well, but basically getting out of that system and then being open to new things yourself. You have to transform yourself first before you can transform any anyone else in terms of their thinking about things. And, and part of that, it's a long process, I think, um, transforming your conception of the world of health, what is disease, what is, what is not, and so on. And then basically when I started at Waikato, I had all these ideas in my head. I was it was, I was seeing a lot of Parkinson's uh, as neurologists see a lot of Parkinson's. And so that was, uh, people I kept seeing, I would just thought to myself, and I'd been thinking about it for a few months before it was in Asia where I had the idea that, uh, maybe we could just transform the metabolism of these people to make the, their brain sort of go into this hunter state. Um, you know, Parkinson's is, is, a it's a neurodegenerative disorder, um, but there's a certain uh, collection of symptoms associated with it. So a lot of them are the motor ones, the tremors and so on, but also uh, most of it is these non-motor symptoms, which is sleep problems, fatigue, urinary problems, cognitive problems, and so on. I just thought maybe it's so complicated, Parkinson's. Like, How can my medications hope to treat this thing that has dozens of symptoms? I just thought I need a whole body therapy. I need something complicated to fight a complicated disorder. I need something that restores, that doesn't just suppress or attack uh, an abnormal protein in their cells. And I thought, well, let's just get this going and see if we can transform the metabolism in these people. So I pitched the idea to, to my colleagues and they were supportive because they were supportive in general and uh, Parkinson's nurse and so on. They were supportive. And we applied for ethics and got a bit of funding. These trials are very cheap to run. You know, they're not like medication trials, extremely cheap, and it all worked. And New Zealand was really great place for doing this. I think I, I'm not sure I could have um, done the ethical approval process in the States or Canada because there may have been other issues there. But anyways, it all happened and we just went for it. And the Parkinson's trial was really the results of that made me go, okay, maybe this something to this and maybe because i could see them right i could see them uh, at every so assessment so, so you, what, 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 you, you've got improvements and and what, what do those look like yeah well look i'm i'm all about clinically significant improvements you can get statistically significant ones uh but but clinically significant means it's it's pretty obvious to anyone who knows that person. And I was seeing definite, to my mind, definite improvements, trying not to fool myself, but I was seeing improvements in a number of these patients, not all of them, but most of them. And uh, so I just thought uh, at the end of that trial that it was so promising that, and, and, and now I look at the the ketogenic diet protocol we had those guys on, and it wasn't that, it was very strict and more difficult than what we use now, much more. And still they had improvements. So I thought, well, what if we could um, expand this to other disorders such as Alzheimer's? And then I thought, well, mitochondria dysfunction is is the underlying disorder we're actually treating, and it just manifests differently in neurons producing neurodegeneration as it does in other cells in which it tends to produce cancer or, or atherosclerosis if it's in endothelial, you know, endothelial cells of the arteries and so on. Then maybe I should branch out into cancer as well, uh, uh, cancers of the brain. And Serona, uh, the patient that you mentioned with the uh, metastatic cancer that has had such excellent success was a part of the trigger for that. Then uh, that led me to uh, do this all sort of alternating strategy of working on trials in neurodegenerative disorders and cancer trials, of which we're running one right now. And that's sort of how it all happened. So can we just talk a little bit about Serona? And I think she's been quite public about this and you mentioned to her. Uh, yep. and just talk about that case a bit. I, I, I find this an astonishing thing. Um, I, you know, I just keep telling all the people who are prepared to listen to me every day. I brum them about this. Um, I don't know if they want to hear it, but I keep telling them about 
Serona. Uh, yeah, I was, I was really moved actually. In fact, I was in tears when I, when you guys did your presentation. So. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, uh, great to hear that you, you, it impacted you so much. I think her story is very powerful on, uh, on, um, emotional or even a spiritual level. And I try to keep things factual myself because I think, uh, different people respond to things differently. So, uh, Sarona, uh, has a, had, had a, she was only 37. Long story short, she had just had a baby and she was diagnosed with a metastatic thymoma, which is a cancer of the originates from the thymus gland. And it was a size of a small football in her lung. And it was seeding to the pleura, the, the lining around the lung. And, and she was basically given a very poor prognosis of approximately one year with chemotherapy. And surgery was not an option. It was too complex, the tumor. And radiotherapy wasn't either. So she decided, um, we just met some semi-serendipitously. She wouldn't say it was serendipitous. She would say it was due to other factors. Uh, a couple of weeks later, and uh, we just talked about what are the approaches. I mean, she was not keen on a year of chemotherapy side effects uh, and then, you know, saying goodbye to her new daughter and husband, amazing guy. She, she, she had a, uh, a, a, a I guess when people talk about a terminal diagnosis, that's, she had a diagnosis of terminal cancer. Oh, right? big time, big time yeah. terminal diagnosis. She was given a year and the oncologist was writing in letters, uh, you know, she expects her to come to the ED with, uh, this particular complication, uh, of a, uh, pericardial effusion. So the, the tumor basically with these things get so big, it starts to really, um, impinge on the heart and then you die from that. So anyways, uh, we, we, she was very brave. Uh, she still is. And she decided to do a hardcore fasting ketogenic diet protocol, basically a seven day fast every month with a keto diet in between. It was not a, it was a bumpy road. People can look at the paper. Uh, if you go to the metabolic neurologist.com site, it's on there. Uh, it was a bumpy road, but basically she's now over five years since that. Uh, really great quality of life, and uh, she she's still doing the fasting keto, and uh, I, I think um, I'm hoping that you know there's a little bit of tumor there, but most of it's gone, it's regressed, and the enhanced immune system function may be a part of that, as well as the theoretical uh, benefits of fasting and keto on cancer themselves. I think there are three main benefits of fasting and keto on tumors outside of the immune system function. And uh, we'll see how we go. But I, I think I'm feel I, you never you got to be humble and and be sure be remember you don't know everything that maybe things could go really bad and she might have real problems next year. But I feel good. I think she feels good. We both think that uh, she's on a good path, and I'm tr starting to translate the strategy she used that we um, uh, saw with had so much success there in other people. And I'm focusing on glioblastoma multiform now, which is a terrible brain cancer. And, uh, you know, so far it's kind of early days in that trial, but so far we're going good, well there too. So that's how the whole cancer, um, aspect to the research began with Serona.